Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, we are invited to pray for Mr. Neville Duckworth who celebrates his birthday today. Let us pray that the Lord may help him to recover from his the surgery he had from his sickness quite fast. And in a very special way, we need to pray for Father Vincent Durayraj, the former provincial who is not doing well right now he is in the ICU in the hospital and he has succumbed himself to COVID-19 and uh, let us pray that the healing touch of the Lord may be uh, with him that also reminds all of us that things are not yet over still it is it is prevailing in very many places let's also pray for our own safety we need to be moving out for our needs and our our work as such but it's let us be a little more careful because it is not it over let's not get that mentality of everything is over now we are back to normal life so let's pray for the safety of the world safety of our own selves and let's in a very special way recall to our minds all our failures and sinful nature and ask the lord's pardon and forgiveness and thus enter into this sacred liturgy. I confess to Almighty God and to, you and to my, my brothers, brothers and sisters that I have greatly, greatly sinned in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my, through my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy on us all. Christ have mercy, Christ of mercy, Christ of mercy on us all. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy on us all. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. So Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 37 to 42. The people of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. A mixed multitude also went up with them, and very many cattle, 
both flocks and herds and they baked unleavened cakes of dough which they had brought out of egypt for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of egypt and could not tarry neither had they prepared for themselves any provisions the time that the people of israel dwelt in egypt was 430 years and at the end of 430 years on that very day all the hosts of lord went out from the land of egypt it was a night of watching by the lord to bring them out of the land of egypt so this same night is a night of watching kept to the land to the lord by all people of israel throughout their generations the word of the lord thanks be to god responsorial psalm let your response be his great love is without end his great love is without end hallelujah oh give thanks to the lord for he is good for his great love is without end he remembered us in our dress distress for his great love is without end and he snatched us away from our foes for his great love is without end his great love is without end your response his great love is without end the first born of egyptians he smote for his great love is without end he brought israel out from their midst for his great love is without end arm outstretched with power in his hand for his great love is without end his great love is without end your response his, his great, great love is without end he divided the red sea into for his great love is without end he made his trail pass through the midst for his great love is without end he flung pharaoh and his force in the sea for his great love is without end his great love is without end your response his great love is without end seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you The Lord be with you and, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter twelve, verses fourteen to twenty-one. The Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus how to destroy him. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him. and he healed them all and ordered them not to make him known this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet isaiah behold my servant whom i have chosen my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased i will put my spirit upon him and he shall proclaim justice to the gentiles he will not wrangle or cry aloud nor will any one hear his voice in the streets he will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick till he brings justice to victory and in his name will the gentiles hope the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ the friends in christ jesus the first reading reminds all of us how today the lord sets the exodus in motion and of course the leader is moses himself and he is leading the people of israel and they are taking a very bold step of moving out of egypt after four centuries of their life there and of course initially they were treated well and they were also like citizens of egypt but then they became slaves eventually 
because the rulers were not very happy about their growth and now we see a very important it's a milestone in the history of judaism as well as in the history of christianity this said the lord setting exodus in motion is the most important event and that is why in the salvation history it takes a very central place the lord redeeming us from slavery taking people of israel through the desert making them to cross the red sea all these events are going to happen but then this is a process uh, an in- initiation of of uh, this whole exodus taking that action of moving out and it's a quite a bold action and uh, the lord has appointed moses and moses does this uh, and you know what is going to happen to moses because the number is a lot here the number that is given is a very very big number but we have a doubt we all know whatever number that is being referred here in the old testament it is not to be taken literally because sometimes we see this old personalities living 700 years 900 years 300 years and all that it is only a way of calculating at that point of time not that they were living for 900 years so also certain numbers we have to take it in with the particular perspective it is only to say it was such a big venture of the lord a huge movement and they are all going to move away from egypt it's a kind of a sign that they are protected by the lord at the same time they are also very courageous people but we should always remember they are little flock of shepherds and it is not like uh, as we visualize so but this venture is very very important uh, to move out of the slavery and they 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 move but we know how the whole exodus journey ends none of these people uh, actually reach the promised land except couple of them including moses moses himself could not step into the promised land that is another story altogether but then this is what is very important setting the exodus in motion now we also see here in jesus's life in the gospel passage he is doing extremely well but you know what happens the pharisees are plotting against him and then he moves on to do the good work of the lord and finally the lord is pleased with whatever jesus is doing so this is a crux of today's uh, learning when i do something i am i am commanded by the lord i am commissioned by the lord to do something so in this venture there is always the interest the, the interest of human beings as well as the interest of god i am commissioned by god to do something to do a mission to fulfill a mission in this process what really should bother us unfortunately we get carried away by pleasing you know our whole thing is to please people how am i to keep everyone happy my life journey when 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 i'm given a mission my life's journey is not to keep people happy if parents were to be only keeping their kids happy it will not be a family at all there has to be uh, there is there should be certain procedures there should be certain principles there should be certain rules there should be certain certain uh, no objectives to be reached you cannot just keeping people happy that is not also in an institution it is not just to keep people happy around you no it's not that we have a purpose and we need to move towards that purpose in the bargain if it's out of human interest if people are going to be against you well and good because our primary focus is not to please god to please people but it is to please god very often even going to the church being good doing good work everything that we do sometimes we have an object of pleasing someone and taking their appreciation which is actually not at all required in the bargain as a by product if it comes to you well and good we experience it we are happy about it but mostly when i do god's work i will only incur criticism people are going to be against you they'll be plotting against you the moment when people are plotting against you while you are doing some good work it's a sign that you are actually doing a good work supposing you are not facing any conflicting situation you are happy and everyone is accepting and everything that you do is taken in a very positive sense it simply means you are not actually doing god's work so what should be our, our priority it is always to please god and not to please people human beings we offer you oh
are to buy Our humble gifts of bread and wine We praise to you and your altar Lord today Make them worthy of your love Send your blessings from above Sanctify these gifts, O oh Lord, we pray. Oh, take our hearts, take our minds. Take all we have, make them thine, O oh Lord. Take all we have. Dear brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of His holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you. Grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of a praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises are nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord, and so in company in the choirs of angels. We praise you, and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy O Lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come in glory. Dying, you destroyed our death. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Anthony, Samuel Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. A mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The service come on and form a divine teaching. We dare to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. I give to you, my friends, my friends, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on me. Peace I give to you, my friend, my friends, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on me. Peace I give to you, my friends. My friends, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer after the Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. The mighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As I kneel before you, as I bow, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us in us, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.